I'm Alex. And I'm Ben. And you're tuning in to Short Rest. Short Rest is a little show we do where we talk about D&D 5e, TTRPGs, and just kind of anything else that we have on our minds on a given day. And Alex, there's something very disturbing going on in the D&D community. What is that? The unwashed masses, plebeians in troves coming to tables unprepared with the proper knowledge, with the proper etiquette required. And we're doing our civic duty here on Short Rest to correct this yes. egregious... Yes, <laughs> to educate. <laughs> now, I don't feel that strongly about it, but... Um, I do think table etiquette is something that is really, really important at the table because um, as a player and as a DM, you're really not only like putting your best self out there and giving trust from one side of the table to the other, um, but you're also showing that you respect the other side of the table, whether you are a player or a DM. Yeah, and we're talking about table etiquette here, but the etiquette doesn't start and end at the table. Before you get to the table, there is work that you need to do to be prepared to have your D&D session. So let's talk a little bit more specifics. Yes, so these are basically things that you can do to ensure that you don't become a problem player at the table. Um, And it starts as simply as bringing a pencil and your character sheet. Uh, bringing your set of dice if you have them. Um, But then there are other things that you can do as well. Um, Like even just going over your character sheet the night before or even an hour before the game starts uh, just to make sure you know how all of your abilities work so you're not going to be slowing down the table. Yes, especially if it's your first couple sessions with a new character. Maybe you're not familiar with how your class abilities work or how your racial features uh, operate in conjunction with that. So it's really important to familiarize yourself as best as you can with your character as much as you can. Of course, there's going to be a couple slip-ups your first couple sessions, uh, but finding a way to reduce that as much as possible should be one of your top priorities as a player. Uh, When it comes to being a DM, uh, coming prepared with the session ahead of time Mm -hmm. is, you know, 101. Because just as your player should come prepared, so should you as the DM, because you need to respect everybody's time. And if, you know, if I'm a player and I, you know, I put in a little bit of time, put in a nice backstory to my character, and my DM's just flying by the seat of his pants 24-7, I'm not going to feel as valued as a player at the table. Exactly. Um, something else to keep in mind, too, is multitasking. Uh, this can really destroy flow at the table. Uh, and it, for a long time, I did not allow tech at the table because of this. Um, because it's so disruptive if we get to somebody's turn in initiative and they're like, you know, scrolling on their phone, not paying attention. Or I've had players who would bring their Switch two sessions and would be playing it whenever they it wasn't their turn in combat you know and it it doesn't just take that player out it takes everybody out because everybody's like looking over and like is this guy really playing like breath of the wild right now um you know when we've prepared this game um, and then, of course, when it's that's players turn in combat, they're like, oh, I didn't realize this giant pit opened in the center of the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, when did that happen? <laughs> if only my DM had told me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's important to establish these etiquette guidelines as soon as possible. Just say, hey, I don't allow any tech at the table if you're that kind of DM or, you know, times are changing. Uh, you know, there's D&D Beyond all over the place now. And, you mm-hmm. know, you got your spell trackers on your phone, which are really great Uh, accessible tools for new players but it can sort of muddy that line it's not as easy anymore to say no tech at the table rather you have to say well if if this is a privilege and i don't want to take it away because it is such a great tool but if we find that you know people are texting sending messages on discord playing breath of the wild Mm -hmm. then we're gonna have to cut down on that because this is the time that people have put aside to have fun And that's the most important part, is this etiquette facilitates fun, not takes away from it. And something uh, that's very key about this as well is I think table, air quotes, etiquette, 
is more important now than it's ever been before because of how we have to play D&D now. Uh, since primarily this is done through Discord or Zoom, uh, any sort of flub that slows down the game is going to slow it down 10 times more. And even worse is there will always be that temptation of tech uh, because that's how you're playing D&D in the first place. There's always going to be a temptation to open up another tab and do something else when it's not your turn. Um, and you have to really take it upon yourself to not do that, to respect your DM or respect your players. Uh, and you, as a DM, need to set that up like session zero, like, hey, just so we're all aware, <laughs> this temptation is here and we need to all do our best to not fall into it. Otherwise, it's a slippery slope and it's going to be a worse experience for everybody. I think another thing that is really important at the table is to not step on other people's toes, trying to steal too much of the limelight, and not to get in too much of the spotlight hog player problem area, but always be prepared for your turn and don't always take away somebody's turn. Everybody gets a time at the table, and it's etiquette not to step on those toes and, mm -hmm. and, and steal the limelight for yourself. Yeah, when you have your turn coming up in combat, be prepared with what you're going to do. Uh, and not only that, be prepared with a backup plan in case an ability you wanted to use doesn't work in quite the right way. Um, my turns in combat generally are 20 seconds tops because I know exactly what I'm going to do. I get there, it's like, all right, I'm moving here. I am attacking this guy. I have all of my dice prepared. I, I'm a little bit of a stickler for myself when it comes to this. So I will literally like keep my weapon damage dice as a pool over here that I can just pick up and roll for speed. Um, but, it, and I think that's a good idea for anybody to do. Um, but just those kinds of things to really keep the game moving because there are parts of this game that are slow enough as it is and we don't need to slow them down any further. I think one of the most important uh, etiquettes uh, for me, one of the, the most important guidelines, is when a ruling question comes up, if it is not quickly resolvable and it isn't life or death for your character, I think you need to respect the DM's decision, and if you if you have a problem with that, maybe after the session shoot the DM a message or pull them aside, but never ever have an argument in front of all the players, have that argument, because it's really uncomfortable for everybody involved, and it really just shuts down the game, and you know, if it keeps coming up and it's it, it really bogs down the game, then why are we even here? Mm -hmm. If we're just gonna argue about rules the whole time. <laughs> So if a ruling question comes up, I think, you know, just let the DM take care of it in the moment that and then discuss job. it later. Yeah, that is their job. <laughs> Something that I've also noticed that comes up a lot is side conversations. Uh, personally, as a DM, I am totally fine with, with players talking in character on the side as a side narrative. Uh, to me, I feel like that's, one, an immersive experience. Uh, and then it also helps those two players bond over whatever that conversation is. Where that gets dangerous is when those conversations become out of character. Um, and it's like snide jokes about what's happening or, you know, comments at every turn. And uh, just kind of taking attention away from what's directly happening. Right. It distracts from the narrative at play. So I hope we've given you a couple tools to create a better experience at your table. Uh, personally, after we've started integrating these, I felt so much better about every session. I felt like people were taking my time t seriously, and I could tell that people felt like I was taking their time seriously as well. Um, and it helps the game run so much faster and smoother, and once you establish all of those rules at the start, it really makes a world of difference, so I hope these help you out. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You've already done so much to help the channel. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much.